Hey guys, welcome to Big Church Online. We are so excited that you've joined us today. If you're looking for any sermons or words of encouragement, you've come to the right place. While you're here, please subscribe, like, comment, share. That way you can stay up to date and help others find it as well. Now, let's get this week's sermon in progress. Here's the thing. I grew up in church my whole life. I mean, I went to church eight days a week, and I grew up under the pew, and you know, when mama was pecking you on the head, so you better, that was the day you could peck them on the head and get away with it. Well, she got... She would, she would peck us on the head because we were being bad. But I grew up in church, and, and I, knew, I heard all the songs. I knew all the verbiage. And, 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 and some of y'all might be going, the blood. What is he talking about? What are, what are they even talking about when they talk about the blood? And, and again, I said that a minute ago. There's, there's a way, way deeper than where I'm going today with all of this teaching. But, but you might be saying, why are they singing about the blood? And that seems kind of gruesome, as Cade K- might say, that is horrible. We love when he says that. But listen to the words of Jesus here. John 6, 53. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. Listen, unless you eat of my flesh, eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. I can imagine the disciples were going, Jesus, yo. Hey, bro. We're trying to get people to follow us. And you're talking about drinking your blood and eating your body? Come on. We're, nobody, you're not going to attract anybody on social media talking about that kind of stuff. What a message. Not a great way to get a following, you might say. But, and it says after that, in John 6, 66, it says many, John 6, 66, 666, that's not a coincidence. It says many walked away from him from that point and followed him no more. When Jesus started talking about drinking my blood and eating my flesh and and talking about carrying your cross, I'm going to talk about that in a couple weeks, about carrying your cross. Many people got offended with that and they said, no, this is too hard. I can't can't hardly do that. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. Those days, animal sacrifices were very common. I mean, you had to go sacrifice this. At least once a year, you had to bring your lamb. You had to bring your best sacrifice to uh, to the temple. And Passover is a major holiday in the, Jewish, in the Jewish faith. There's eight days they do that. And Passover lambs, they were sacrificed, and, they were, and some of them were eaten. Just as those sacrificed lambs were sacrificed to be eaten, Jesus sacrificed his body. It's no coincidence that on the night of the Passover, what did Jesus say? He said, Jesus took the bread, and that's what we're going to do with communion, as you see on the right and left up here. He's up here. He took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body. This morning, I want to tell you a little story. It's found in the Old Testament. Somebody asked me the other day, do you preach out of the Old Testament? I said, we preach from Genesis to Revelations. We don't want to scare everybody away in Revelations, but you know. But I believe that the Old Testament still applies today. This story still applies to what we are and what we're going through. This story is a story of sacrifice, of obedience, and love. I had some guys helping me at the church one day, and uh, there's three or four of them, and I mean, they helped me put stuff together and fix stuff, and says, hey, just because you guys helped me, I said, let's go to lunch, I'm taking care of it. So we get all the way to the restaurant, and we sit down, and and I ordered what I'm going to order. They ordered everything they wanted to do, and I reached back as I don't have right now, my wallet was not with me. I didn't do it on purpose. Y'all, y'all ever been around that friend that never has any money? Come on. Oh, I didn't even want to go there. But, but around that person never has any money. Well, I reached back to pay for it. And I was like, oh, guys, I got some bad news. I was going to buy, but um, it's not. They said, Pastor, don't worry about it. We got you covered. They never let me forget about it for about six months after that. And I had to end up taking a couple of them out to eat and paying for it. But they told me they had me covered. The title of my first message today, we're going to go for three hours today. <laughs> Kidding. It's called Covered. There's a story in Exodus where 
But like today, God's people were in bondage. They were in slavery. They were in a, in a foreign land, and they were being, I mean, they were just being treated terribly. The enemy and Pharaoh had made them slaves, and God sent Moses in to free them. But there was resistance. There's always resistance when freedom is trying to be, oh, come on, somebody. Whenever there's freedom, there's always going to be resistance. And Pharaoh put up resistance. The enemy puts up resistance and everything. Oh, this is for somebody. You're fighting for your freedom right now and you're getting resistance. Don't go backwards. Don't go, don't go sideways. Keep going forward because that's right where God wants you to be. But anyway, Pharaoh uh, uh, was resistant to it and God sent plagues. I mean, he was trying to get them free. He said water into blood and, 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 and he frog, how many ooh, frogs, ugh. lice, hail, none of that stuff worked. But God had one last one. This one was gonna be so severe and it would require obedience and it would require sacrifice. That's when Passover, the Jewish holiday, was instituted. Look at Exodus 12. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year had to be a specific lamb. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now, you shall keep it until the 14th day. There's a lot of stipulations here of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. As you see, there's a lot of conditions there. There had to be a sacrifice and there had blood had to be shed. Can I just tell you something this morning? You can't just sacrifice anything. God doesn't want your leftovers. I love leftovers. If it's in the refrigerator three days, I'm eating it. I don't really care. I'll eat it cold. I don't, but God does not like your leftovers. He wants the very first things that you have to him. When you're in tithing, he doesn't want you to get to the bottom of your checklist. Oh, somebody. He doesn't want you to get to the bottom of your budget. You need to be at the, he needs to be at the top of your budget. And when he's at the top of your budget, I'm preaching on tithing this morning. He will make all those things come that you need. That was free. David said this, I will not sacrifice something that does not cost me anything. When you sacrifice, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you some time. It's going to cost you some talent. It's going to cost you some money. It's going to cost you something. Easter, we celebrate Jesus as the perfect lamb who was sacrificed for us. Listen, all, your, your, your sacrifices don't have to be perfect, but they need to be your best. I freed somebody right there. They don't got to be perfect. They just got to be your best. And, and, and we talk about perfection all the time. God's not looking for you to be perfect. He's looking for you to continue to grow and get stronger and put forth your best effort when you do something. Although the sacrifice, no, I'm sorry. Being covered is tied to obedience. God gave specific directions. Why? Because this last plague he's about to put on them, it was going to be bad. He was going to kill the firstborn in the whole nation. The firstborn uh, son, daughter, sorry. The firstborn was going to be killed. So that was very severe. So look what he said. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the doorposts, on the sides and top of the door frames of the house when they eat the animal. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood, I love this one, now the blood shall be a sign for you on your houses where you are. And when I see, come on, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. Title of my second message is, Stay in the House. Anybody remember COVID? Does this seem like it's been 17 years ago? No, it doesn't to me. Well, when they first, when COVID first started happening, I thought, man, we get to stay in the house. This is good. I mean, we don't got to go to work. And I'm like, this is all right. They canceled March Madness, though. So I'm sitting there, you know, about the first week it was good. You know, I thought, this is okay. After a while, I was getting stir crazy. You can tell her, she's like, can you just go somewhere and go walk or do something? But when they canceled March Madness, I said, oh no, it's, it's all over now. I, I got to have at least some basketball coming off. I'm going to sit home. 
But I remember when, anybody ever ground your kids and you paid the price for it? Cain. Cain. We would ground Cain or she would ground Cain. I was helping her along with it. He would drive us totally insane for those two weeks. And finally, after about the seventh day, or I don't even think it made seven, maybe, it was like, just go somewhere. I don't care where you go, just don't be, don't be in my presence right now. But that's how it was. We, we were all stuck in the house and, and pacing and everything. But can I tell you, the house here represents being in covenant with God. There are benefits to staying in the house. You know what? One of the benefits, there's safety in the house. Look at what Psalm says. If you make the Lord, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, there's conditions to the covering, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home. I love that when it said up there, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Listen, you don't realize what's already passed over you in your life. I've said it before. You, there's some of y'all shouldn't even be sitting in this place right now, including myself. When there are things that God has protected you from. He's kept you from. He's, he's pushed you out of the way. Oh, he's pushed you out of the way of that car that should have run over top of you. You don't know what he's done to pass over you. Sickness and heartache and even death. I love the verse that says he's given his angels. Whew, my, my guardian angel, he, he's had to work hard. He's given his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Can I tell you something? You tried to open the door, God shut it. You tried to keep it open, and God shut it. You shut it, he kept it open. You tried your path, and what he did, he redirected you because his ways are higher than our ways. His, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Let me say again. There is safety in the house. There's also separation in the house. There was chaos in Egypt. There's chaos in our world right now. There's a separation that God has called us to be. Look what he said in Exodus. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful. Huh, when chaos is going all around you, you can still have peace in all, when all hell's breaking loose. It will be so peaceful that not even a dog, what Coda would not even bark. Then you, will, then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction. Come on, somebody needs to hear this. Between Egyptians and Israelites. The King James says that we are a peculiar people. I've been called that a few times by people who actually like me. That was supposed to be funny. But it calls us a peculiar people. You're different than everyone else around you. Or at least we should be. There should be a distinction between us and Egypt. There should be a distinction between us and the world that we live in. There should be something that stands up and shows people, hey, I know not just that you go to church, but that you're a child of God and you're walking with him each and every day. What makes you different than everybody else? He's got you covered. You got to stay in the house. Everybody's always trying to find a way to move up or move out or get away. Well, we're moving on up. You know, y'all don't even know that when I'm old. But everybody's always trying to move up, get ahead, move out. But I tell you, there is blessing in staying in the house. We've had people that have left our church for, certain, for reasons, and, and some of them were dumb. But... Uh, I'm just being honest. Uh, and some of them were legitimate. It was good. That's all right. But there are people that have left for the wrong reasons who are not connected to any house at all now. Sometimes you've got to stay connected to the house through the good times, through the bad times, through the in-between times, through the uncertain times. You've got to stay connected to the house. Look what happened yesterday. We came together to, to, to send Miss... She's already in Jesus' hand. We didn't send her anywhere. But... What unity, what teamwork. We saw that to come together. Man, there was more food over there. You could have fed three churches for all the food that was in there. But everybody came together. That is what staying in the house is all about. That is what being unified and we're better together is all about. You got to be obedient to where God has placed you because you know why? There's salvation in the house. But this requires a choice. 
Pastor Vonda hit this one last week. And if it seems here, look at Joshua. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods, the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, he took a stand. We're going to serve the Lord. When you make the right choice, there is safety in the house. There is salvation in the house. God has you covered. Covered by what? Covered by the blood. When that enemy passed over, when that death angel passed over Egypt, he was looking for the blood over the doorposts and over the sides. And every place that he saw that the blood had been applied, he passed over it. He went around. I'm telling you, when the blood's been applied to you, again, you don't know what you've been saved from. And we might ask, why is the blood important? Again, I don't have, this could be weeks of talking about this. But Leviticus, I, I teased Pastor Isaiah, I said, we're going to Leviticus today. Don't go, over, don't go there very much. But it says, Leviticus says, for the life of the body is in the blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. There is life in the blood. Why did, why did Jesus' beating and crucifixion look so gruesome? Because blood had to be shed. You wonder, you've seen the passion of the Christ. I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, you know. Blood had to be shed, but I got news for somebody. Look, look, at, look at Hebrews 9. In fact, according to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. The devil was out there laughing. He seen Jesus on the cross, and, and he was probably saying, oh, my gosh, I won, I have won, I have won. And I like the old video where he said, you so dumb, devil. Y'all remember that video from like, you so dumb. I can imagine looking over at the devil saying, you so dumb. That blood is, shot, is shedding all over the place, coming out of every place, because it needed to be shed. The cross and the blood, the resurrection gave us victory. Can I tell you this morning, when he looks at you, he doesn't see your past. The enemy does. He keeps rewinding it in your mind. He doesn't see your mistakes. The enemy keeps throwing them at your face. He doesn't see your failures. He just sees the blood. Oh, this, this is better. When he says, I got you covered, that means there's no disaster that will touch you when I, strike the, when I strike the land. Hammer time, can't touch this. When the blood's been applied, you can't touch this. The devil used to be able to bring accusation against us, but Jesus, our covering he became our mediator. He became that go between between God because you know what? We deserve death. We deserve what he got on the cross. That was meant for, that's what we deserved. But he was our mediator, our go between. Hey, you know what I love too? He was our advocate. He was the one that goes and pleads on our behalf. You know, Jesus, when the devil tries to accuse you, you need to listen to this. You got to remember that Jesus stood up in the courtroom and he said, No, not today, devil. When every time there's an accusation, Jesus is standing there in the middle saying, no, they're covered under the blood. No, 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 I don't see them the way that you see. Oh, come on. Jesus stood up and said, I got them covered. I did the work, and now it's finished. So you're finished, devil. He gave us the assurance that we are justified, just as if we'd never sinned. My debt's been paid. I'm forgiven. So many times we need to start walking and living in, I'm free. My debt has been paid. He paid something that I had no way of paying for. The, for. I'm cleansed. And we have the power to overcome the enemy. The Bible says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Can I tell you something this morning? You're no longer under the curse. Look what Galatians says. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. 
when he was hung on the cross, oh, come on, listen. He took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus took the curse of death. He took the curse of sin. He took the curse of separation. And when that veil was torn, we had access. When he said it is finished, the veil was torn in two. We had access into the holy holies. We had access to God. When we came close to God because of the blood, I'm no longer separated because I have the blood covering me. Can I just tell you this much as they're coming up to play? We're covered under the blood each and every day. And just like the virus came out a few years ago, what we need to do is we need to be infectious. We need to be infectious to everyone that's around us. When they walk into the room, they need to catch what we have. I ain't talking about a virus, y'all. They need to catch what uh, Pastor Mindy loves. There's more caught than taught. They need to catch where, we, where we're living. They need to know that we go to big church. And not just because we go to big church. We serve a God that can change everything. Let's carry hope. Let's carry peace. Let's carry joy. Let's carry happiness. As I'm getting ready to close, why did the lamb and Jesus have to die? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Not his sin, our sin. He paid the ultimate sacrifice so that you could sit here this morning and be free. He paid the ultimate sacrifice so you could come, you could have access to God at any time that you need him. Can I tell you that you're, God, Jesus is only a prayer away? The thing you're going through is only a prayer away? But here's the thing. We must live a crucified life. Boy, that sounds a little churchy, don't it? You know, like crucified life, what does that mean? Sounds pretty churchy. But Galatians says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live. We're dead. We're dead to our past. We're dead to our sins. We're dead to those things. When you accept Jesus, you die to those things. But you got to... Oh, you got to crucify some things every day. Come on. Anybody else in here? Y'all get your hands in there like you don't care because you got to crucify something every day. And the life which I live now in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and he gave himself for me. A crucified life means you got to get up every day. Oh, and you got to kill that thing. That doesn't look like Jesus. If, if y'all are perfect in here and you look like Jesus 24-7, then praise hallelujah. We don't need an altar call. But if you're like me, you gotta get up and crucify something every single day and sometimes multiple times a day. Today, you got it. let's all stand if we would. Today, we need to make a choice to put some things to death, to crucify some things. And you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a few of these out here, but I want you to fill in the blank for yourself. We gotta get up every day and crucify that sinful nature that tries to come out and get us every time we turn around. We gotta crucify and put to death that fear. Oh, can I tell you, we got so many Christians and so many, so many believers living in a state of fear all the time. You gotta crucify that doubt and that worry and that discouragement and that thing that just keeps playing itself over and over to you. We gotta make some choices to change some things. We're gonna sing another song and your altar can be anywhere. And there will be people on the left and the right up here to pray with you and help you on this journey. But I'm asking you today to make the altar wherever it is in your heart that you need it to be. Pray this with me if you would. Say, Dear Jesus, I come to you today releasing and killing that thing 
that is coming between me and you. Please forgive me. Make me new. I thank you for covering me. I want to live in your house forever. Amen. He's got you covered. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You don't have to live in discouragement. He's got you covered. As we get ready to take communion, they're gonna sing a song. And There's one part of communion that I bring up all the time. It just says, it says I'm gonna read the scripture. It says, examine yourselves. And maybe you've never given Jesus your heart. Maybe you prayed that prayer and you really meant it. We wanna connect with you. We want you to take that card out to the welcome bar and turn it in. We wanna go on that journey with you. But maybe there's a time today as we take the, the Holy Communion that you need to just examine your life. Just need to, to lay, okay, God, where have, I, where have I fallen short? But can I tell you, he's, covered, he's covering your shortcomings. You just have to accept that. So Father, we come to you right now. We ask you, as that song says, we open up our hearts to you. We open up our minds to you. We ask you, Lord, right now to just examine our hearts and poke and prod, God, if there's anything that's in us that needs you to change, God, help us to be pliable. Father, we come to you and we thank you that you did shed your blood for us. We thank you, God, that we were covered under the blood. We thank you, God, that your body was broken for us so that we could have new life. So Father, we come to you right now and we just say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us today. If you're looking for more information or resources, you can visit mybigchurch.com or follow us on social media at mybigchurch. We love you guys. See you soon.